the hottest blue lock takes of 2024 you guys know the drill by now if you guys like these type of videos please remember to like subscribe and share these videos to anybody you think would like them i'm trying to hit 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year so i really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and share my videos anyways without further ado let's get right into this shit the first take we have here is i don't know if it's really a hot take but chigiri will get permanently injured at a crucial point and this will wake kunigami up from his batman era now i'm not gonna lie i do think that kunigami's batman era is coming to an end sooner or later i don't think that will be when chigiri gets injured though i really really hope chigiri does not get injured in this next arc because I just feel like he has so much more potential to reach for his character. I feel like Shigiri should make it back to that point where even if he didn't get injured, he would be that good. You know, he should make it to that point in the series to then get injured. So I'd say maybe this would be like final arc end game type of stuff if he does get injured. Now, I do agree that the foreshadowing and signs are definitely there because... Bro, we've seen in the Nagi episode when Shigiri almost literally tore his ACL again, he would have been out. Nagi literally saved this guy's whole career. So yeah, honestly, Shigiri will get permanently injured. I just don't know if this whole Batman arc era is going to come to an end for Kunigami because of it. The next one we have here is the Ubers match is the best match of the NEL. The Hiyori development, Baro absolutely cooking snuffy's backstory it will it was all just so good now listen i like the ubers game i do think that the manchine game is better and i'm going to tell you exactly why i think the manchine game is better first of all i prefer nagi to borrow i don't know i just always felt like whenever nagi and isagi play it's a lot more interesting than when borrow plays isagi i don't know that's just me but another thing is in the manchine game we had the introduction of metavision which was like this new like alien level like thinking that isagi had every single chapter had insane art where isagi was just like literally thinking out of his head making insane plays like stopping the world's number two best player the manchine game was just insanely hype now if you're talking about strictly in terms of writing i do think that the ubers game is better written than the manchine game but I also think that the Manchine game is better paced than the Ubers game. The Ubers game, if you guys don't remember, while it was going on weekly, although in a binge it might be different, but while it was going on weekly, people were literally begging this game, well, just like the PXG game right now, they were begging this game to end. This game was long, and I mean long, I'm not even joking. On top of that, I feel like the Manchine game just had so much more room for things to happen, because in the Ubers game, the only way Kaiser would really score was if Lorenzo let his mark off of him. And yes, that happened in the game, but like you already know Lorenzo's going to be on him for the rest of the game, so Kaiser's not going to really do anything else after that. And then it kind of followed like the same pattern. A Baro goes down, Uber's formula, kicks, gets blocked. That should happen four times until Baro had his crazy awakening, in which in terms of awakenings, I do think Baro's was better written and better than Nagi's, but I do think the goal was better than for Nagi. Now, as I said, as for writing, Ubers easily takes it. You know, Snuffy's backstory, Hiyori's backstory, they're kind of clear of any backstory in Manshine Match. Rio would be top three if he focused on being a forward rather than being a midfielder for Nagi. Now, this is a very, very controversial take. And you know what? Listen, I can genuinely see this as facts, even though it hurts me as a Nagi fan to say this. I feel like Nagi at the current moment is holding Ryo back. But one thing I think Ryo really lacks that Nagi has is that killer instinct. In terms of just straight killer instinct, of course Ryo is an all-around player. If you look at it on paper, Ryo would be a better forward than Nagi. But I feel like Ryo lacks that one thing that really makes someone a forward. He lacks that real like ego. You see Nagi, when he wants to get a goal, he's activated. He's alive. He's like, you know what? Let's go get this shit. I just don't think Rio is going to have that same type of hunger. Yes, I know Rio has shown some hunger in some instances in the story, but he just doesn't give me striker vibes. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm literally sorry. I know on paper, when you look at it, you're like, oh, this guy can copy everything. You know I mean, his ability is completely OP, but I just don't feel like it will work for him. I'm not going to lie. I'm sorry. I don't, I can't really put my finger on it, 
but I just do not think that Rio being a striker would work that well for him. Now, of course, if you're talking about all-around play, of course, Rio would be a better all-around striker than Nagi is. But if I'm talking about peak for peak, I think Nagi at his peak would be better than that all-around Rio at striker at his peak. The next take we have is Loki has the most potential as a striker and should be number one in the future. Now, this is not really a hot take in my opinion. I feel like this is kind of being set up, whereas we have the current France's best, Noel Noah, you know, he's like the best player in the world. He's crazy good. But I feel like in this match, Loki is also French. So I feel like Loki also has a really big chance to become one of the best players in the world. Um, but the fact that Noah's not really interested in Loki, like he doesn't think Loki will be able to rival him like Kaiser will. is kind of like, I don't know if that's true, Noah. Like you literally have a rival right there. But at the same time, yes, I totally agree with this take. I do think that Loki should be one of the best players or the best player in the manga in the entire series at one point in the rest of the chapters left. Bachura has potential to be top three and if he had a shooting weapon, could generally be the best in blue lock. His dribbling has shown to beat Pablo top five and get past the professional defense of U20 team by himself. By himself, he's the strongest arm emoji. Listen, you guys know I'm not the hugest Bachura fan, but I totally agree with this guy. If Bajra had a shooting weapon, like he could literally shoot, like let's say Baro or Rin, bro, Bajra would be, <laughs> right now I'd say he's in the top 10, but with that, he would most likely be top three, maybe even top two, maybe even top one. I'm not even kidding. Bajra is literally unstoppable at that point. Like the author had to find a way to nerf him because his dribbling is so OP to this point that Nobody could really stop him 1v1. Literally nobody could stop him 1v1. And I'm really curious to see in the U20 World Cup arc how anybody's going to stop him down the wing. Imagine Bajra going down one wing and Shigiri going down the other wing, constantly tearing up your defense and swinging in deadly crosses for a striker like Baro or Isagi to catch them on a direct shot or a header. Like, bro, who's stopping those two? A little bit off topic, but like on some real shit, bro, Bajra would be a demon with a shooting weapon. I'm sorry. I totally agree with this guy. I feel like Bacho would be one of the best. As for the feats he mentioned, yeah, I know he dribbled past the entire U20 professional defense, if you want to say so. But Ren also did the same thing, so I feel like that feat kind of gets demeaning on him. I feel like current Bacho's feats are a lot better than old Bacho's feats. The next one we have here is the most Blue Lock fans don't actually understand football or positions. The biggest reason I say this is because people are obsessed with this physicality argument for Isagi. Even if his physical ability rises, he's still 5'7". He's not fucking Holland. A way more important ability is his technical ability or playmaking. He's already good at it though, but I mean more long passes. If he had the dribbling quality, you literally can't touch him at that point. He has the playmaking to get past you anyways. And if you tackle him because of his physicality, you're just going you're just getting a foul. The only problem will still will still be his lack of options while being in front of goal. I don't think Isagi has a lack of options while being in front of goal. Like let's say it's a 1v1 with the goalkeeper. He has his direct shot and now he has his new two gun volley. I don't think I don't know where you got that from, but I do sort of agree to a point. But you have to understand that Blue Lock is a manga series first. Like, yes, it may be a sports manga, so sports fans will tune in to watch it. But the typical manga people, it was the best-selling manga of 2023. So a lot of people who aren't just sports fans now, I think, have attention and know what Blue Lock is. You know what I mean? So they'll just read the manga, and even if they don't play sports, they're just going to read it and just look and make their own takes there. They could be people that have never touched a football in their life. As someone who has touched a football in my life, I can say that relating blue lock to real life is kind of really difficult at times because these people just do shit that's completely like <laughs> literally out of logic. Like Loki literally just stopped the Kaiser impact and that's just insane in humans feats. So I don't know, comparing it to real life is kind of weird, but positioning, I guess, I guess I can see your point with Isagi's technical and physicality point. But honestly, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a big fan of comparing reality with Blue Lock. Even though I do do it sometimes, I'm not trying to mean it literally. It's just like a little comparison. All right, so this guy here has two takes. He has Barra will is a better main rival than Rin. People hate the monk because they can't accept they'd also be a regular dude. All right, listen. 
I don't hate the monk. I hate the fact that he's a bum and he's actually putting in work against Rin. Destroyer mode Rin, by the way. The Rin that Isagi literally said with MetaVision, the guy who can adapt to almost anything in the game, said, I have no answer for it. And the monk comes in and is at this moment currently being able to stop him two possessions in a row. So that's done. Anyways, Baro being a better rival for Isagi than Rin is just a take I never got. Baro fans, listen, Baro's a good rival for Isagi, but... Rin is literally the guy Isagi has been chasing for a long time now. I feel like in the second selection, Isagi kind of like put propelled himself to a borrow level. I feel like he was playing to a higher level in the second selection than borrow was. I'm not even joking. Like he even being able to compete on the same wavelength as Rin in the second selection was a big achievement for Isagi because at that point, nobody could touch Rin. So that's why I feel like Rin is just such a more daunting presence back then. Now, if we talk about in U20, yes, Baro got his crazy goal, but Rin also gets an amazing power up, which also fuels their dynamic when Rin's brother, who all he wants to do is acknowledge, he just wants Sai to acknowledge his skills, ends up acknowledging Isagi after Isagi steals his goal. So first of all, I feel like there's more of a gap between their skill levels in the beginning, which leads to Isagi chasing him, which I think makes it more interesting. And then on top of that, I feel like in U20, Rin just, it's more personal. It's way more personal than Baro Isagi. Baro Isagi kind of feel like friends that will meet on the pitch and beef each other, but after the game, they'll be cool. Rin and Isagi, genuinely, yes, they might be cool, but I don't think Rin even fucks with Isagi like that. Like, even after the game, Rin barely talks to him. So you know what I mean? It's just like straight on hots 24-7. I feel like that's way more intense. Now we can look at the NEL. Listen. In terms of play, I think in terms of pure striker, Baro is better than Rin right now. From what I've seen, Baro is better than Rin, to me. Um, but in terms of being a rival to Isagi, bro, I've never heard Isagi say some shit like, I can't adapt to this, to Baro, or he's scared. He, he's never said anything like that. He never had faces like these when he's going up against Baro. He only has these faces when he goes up against someone like Rin. So that's why I'm saying, bro, Rin is just such a more daunting presence than borrow to Isagi. I'm sorry, borrow fans. You guys keep forcing yourself in these discussions. You're not near Rin in terms of being a rival to Isagi. I'm sorry. The next one we have is Snuffy is the best master striker, period. Not a very complex take, <laughs> but it is a take. And honestly, it's the, be it's the best take. Like, but in my opinion, Snuffy has the best writing out of any of the, any of the master strikers. I think he's the best sensei out of the master strikers, excluding maybe Prince, who's like top two with him. But yeah, Snuffy is easily the best master. That's enough said, honestly. Rin is easily the best player in Blue Lock, and it ain't close. He has the most potential and will eventually surpass Se. All right, when we're talking about potential, I'm a Nagi fan, so I'm going to have to stop you right there. I think Nagi, when he plays like in, he's in flow for the entire game, is going to be better than Rin by the end of the series. I'm sorry. Listen, <laughs> rage at me in the comments. I do think when we talk about anything potential-wise in Blue Lock, like who's going to be the potential best striker, it's Nagi. Every single time. That's my answer. I don't care. Anyways, and then when we go with him being the best player in Blue Lock right now, and it's not close, that's where I think you're, you're like, tripping. Isagi just did the two-gun volley and scored on his head top. Um, Baro just had the gamble shot. Like, come on, Baro and Isagi are definitely at least close. Even if you don't think they're better than him right now, they're definitely close. I don't think that it's a blowout in either way, either like stretch of the imagination. And the last one for today we have is Isagi would have been a better strike, better as a striker if he was under the teachings of Chris Prince. My go. <laughs> as his biggest weakness is his physique and Chris would have trained Isagi to have a world-class physique and also improve on his strength as Chris philosophy is to train up your muscles to get where you want and to really focus and polish on your strength. I could go on and on, but this is the main reason. Now, listen, I do like, listen, I feel like people overrate the fact that Isagi needs to get more physically strong to like get better at this point. Honestly, I feel like, listen, there's nobody on Manshine with Metavision. Even when they play Kaiser, like against Bastard City, let's just say Isagi's on Manshine. I don't think he's learning Metavision in that match. Because when remember, when he's playing 
with Bastern, he gets to see Kaiser use Metavision 24-7. So he gets more time to study him using it. How does he use it? How does he do it? But in Manshine, it'll just be like a one-off thing where Isagi sees it for the first time. And he's like, oh shit, Say also did that. I don't think he would unlock it as fast. I still think he would unlock it, but I don't think he would unlock it as fast. On top of this, the physicality thing, like I was saying before, Chris Pritz literally says that, yo, like if you don't max out the right, like muscle you could completely fall apart as a player so i don't think isagi really needs muscles that much like you guys really you guys get me like what situations do you see isagi really needing muscles and like strength the only thing i think that will really help him with is like retaining the ball but he's never really on the ball that much anyways like he's not a dribbler you know he doesn't get bodied off the ball when he's dribbling the only time he will be that would be useful is like getting to a ball in the air or something like that. You know, when someone plays it over the top, he'll be fast enough to go get it. But like, that's it. Like, I don't think it would make much of a difference. I feel like he's much better on Bastard Munchen, where he learns MetaVision, learns how to adapt, learns how to literally think a completely different way because of Kaiser and think to a completely different level because of Kaiser. You guys have to remember, he literally destroyed Manshine City when he learned MetaVision for the first time, and I feel like he's not going to learn it that quick if he went to Man Manshine City. Anyways, guys, that'll do it for today's video. I'm sorry if your comment didn't get addressed. Listen, when I first made that post, I did not expect there to be 300 takes in there, and obviously, I cannot do 300 takes in one video because the video will be three hours long, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And listen, if we the faster we get to 4,000, the faster we get another one of these videos and the faster more of you can get your takes out there and I can react to them. So yeah, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. I hope you guys all have a great day and bye-bye.